Hello everybody, this is Fred, AA7BQ from QRZ.com. This morning I'm going to show you how to set up two-factor authentication to secure your account on QRZ without using a cell phone. We've been getting a lot of requests for this and a lot of people think that you have to have a cell phone and the fact is you don't and this demonstration is going to show you how that works. I've already logged into the QRZ system as our fictitious user XX1XX and looking along the top here at the blue menu bar you'll see your call sign in this case XX1XX on the top right and I'm going to drop down I'm going to choose the account option from the menu and that'll take us right to the user's account. Right on the top of the page here is what you need to look at and where it says two-factor authentication and in this case it's not enabled so we're going to click here to activate to uh, to begin actually the activation of 2FA so I'll click on that and this is the first page for two-factor authentication now the first thing that you have to decide with two-factor authentication is whether you're going to use an app uh, to generate your login codes or you're going to receive them by text message the text message method is is not great in all instances and we don't recommend it and that's because the codes themselves time out in 30 seconds and if your cell phone provider doesn't deliver them fast enough you may not be able to log in uh, in any event we we talked about uh, doing this without a cell phone and so that's what we're going to do here today I'm going to show you how to do that now the first thing you have to do is you have to get an application on your computer that's called an authenticator uh, Google Authenticator was the first one out and we mentioned it here however uh, it's not the authenticator you're going to use for Windows. Uh, we're going to click on the authenticator and it says use one. And the first thing it's asking us is which app we're going to use. Now we have to get the app. We haven't done that yet. So uh, what we're going to do up here is uh, find the app. Now the app is called WinAuth. We're going to find that by doing a simple Google search. I'm just going to type it in up here at the top WinAuth.com and uh, it'll go right to the WinAuth page. There we go. All right, we're at the WinAuth website now, and we need to download this software and install it. So as we scroll down the page a little bit, uh, and it says that the latest stable download is 3.5. That's the current version, and uh, so that's very nice. And uh, uh, so right here, stable and beta downloads. Click on that, and we've come here. Now this is a beta download, the first one. We don't want the beta version. That's the that's the upcoming release. Not yet on that. Let's take the settled release right here. The latest release, 351, it's indicating here. Just keep scrolling down until you come to assets. We want to get the asset that we need, which is the zip file, winauth351.zip. We can just ignore the other ones. I'll click on this, and uh, it's already started downloading. It's done downloading. Uh, I have a... Uh, a virus protection program built into my computer to check for internet downloads. It's already scanned this file, but I'm going to do it again just to show you. And I'm going to choose here open folder in the in the uh, options. By the way, I'm using Microsoft Edge, the browser known as Edge for this demonstration. It works practically the same way with the other browsers such as Chrome and Firefox and Internet Explorer. Uh, in any event, once the file's downloaded, uh, choose the option to open the folder and see it. So I'm choosing this option. There's the folder. Uh, it's a, there's two of them here because I've downloaded it more than once in preparation for this demonstration. So we're just going to take the one here, winauth351.zip, and on my system I can say uh, scan it. So I'm going to scan it right now with Norton Security. This is a step that that I highly recommend that you always scan anything you download to make sure that it's clean. This one is clean, no threats found, so I'll say OK. Now, double clicking on the program, uh, this will open up the zip file and expose winauth.exe. That's the program we want, so we're going to click on that and uh, get it installed. And there we go, we're clicking on it, and uh, it's doing its thing. And not much happening yet. It's doing its thing. And give us there it is. It's came up, and now I can uh, uh, make that window smaller. And for now, I'm I'm going to uh, leave this background window up. Uh, and it says here, click the Add button to create or import your authenticator. 
All right, that's your first step. Now, so what we're going to do is uh, free up a little space on the screen here. And I'm going to do that by going uh, back here to the uh, QRZ page and making it a little bit smaller so that it'll fit on the screen. That way I can see the win off here on one side and the screen on the other. Now, back to our two-factor authentication. Uh, it, the choices are Google Authenticator app or text message. We've chosen Authenticator app. It's not really Google, but that's, the, that's what we're calling it here. Now, a backup cell phone number. Uh, we're, we're not going to use a cell phone, so I'm going to click here. I do not want to provide a cell. I don't want to use it as a backup, so we don't have a cell phone. Now it says install Google Authenticator application on your mobile device. Uh, we've installed a compatible application on our laptop, which that's basically what it's asking for. Now it wants your current password. Why? Well, they don't want someone other than you walking up to your computer and setting this up. So I'm typing in a, the password was remembered on this browser. That's fine. So I'll hit continue. Now we've come to the point to where there is this code. This is a this is called a QR code, and if, when you're using a cell phone, you can just aim the camera at that, and it'll put the code into the system. Well, we don't, we can't do that here. We have to type in the text version of that line, and that's found on the second line down here. It says, my application is asking for a secret code instead of scanning. Click here. So I click here. There's the code. All right. I'm going to double click on that and select copy. So I get a copy of that code. And now I'm coming back to the WinAuth program here. I'm going to say add an authenticator. That's what I want. And it says, all right, give it a name. I'm going to say my, I'm going to call it my QRZ login. And now it says enter the secret code. All right, I'm going to right click and choose paste. It's going to paste in that code that we got down here. Uh, and now it says click the verify button to check the first code now this is this is the this is the synchronization step that's the most important i'm going to click on this and now it came up with this number 693939 now quickly move this out of the way come back to this page and type that number in 639 uh 693939 693939. It's a unique code that was just generated. And it says the confirmation code is correct and two factor is now enabled. That's it. You're now done with QRZ. Now on the authenticator over here, I'll just say OK. And uh, uh, it'll come up and ask you a couple of other things. First of all, do you want to protect the authenticator? If uh, your computer is going to be used by other people, you, you want to do this. You put a password in, and then you have to unlock the authenticator before you can use it. But we're not doing that here. I'm just going to say, no, you don't have to do that. And I'll just say, OK. Now, you'll notice that there's a code appearing here. This is code uh, could be used if we were logging in right now, but we're not. We're not logging in right now. So anyway, as you see, that, that code showed up for a little while, then went away. If I click on the little arrow here, a new code will pop in. That's for another login, if we want to do another login. Now, so we're logged in over here on the QRZ page, and I'm going to log out right now. Say log out. Done. We're logged out. Now, uh, I'm going to log in again. Uh, I'm going to put in the correct one here, XX1XX. Then I'm going to hit Next. Let's say enter your password. All right. There's my password. Let's see. There's the password. Sign in. And now it's asking me for my Google Authenticator application code. Well, that's over here on WinAuth. Now punch the arrow, and there's my number 569 565 499. 565 499. Now, if I click this, trust this device for 30 days, uh, it won't ask me for another code. So that's an option right there. I'm not going to uh, click that right now because I'm using this for something else. Anyway, I sign in and boom, login is successful. There you go. That's a successful two-factor authentication login. It's very, very handy. 
Now, if uh, you want to disable this at any time, click on Disable Two-Factor Authentication. I just want to show you what that looks like. If you don't want to use Two-Factor anymore, that's your choice. To disable it, you click on the red button. You have to have your password to disable it, and you have to have the next code. So in other words, you can't disable this unless it's still working. If it stops working, uh, you're going to have to contact QRZ support so they can take so that we can remove two-factor from your authentication. Be uh, aware, however, that in order to have two-factor authentication removed, we may have to ask you to provide identification. Uh, that's just so that someone can't come to us and ask for two-factor to be removed uh, for a nefarious purpose. So that's the reason for that. Anyway, uh, that's all there is to it, uh, to getting logged in under two-factor authentication. We hope you found this video uh, useful, and uh, uh, feel free to ask us questions anytime at QRZ uh, by going uh, by writing to support at QRZ.com or by using uh, our support website. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you on QRZ.